All right, today I wanted you to, to build a practical example. I'm sure you've all seen this in websites where you're given some sort of access code and there's a collection of individual input elements on the page. But all you have to do is take this code and paste it inside the first one and it fills out the whole thing for you. Or you can start typing and it will automatically jump to the next element. Now, we don't have the code here, so the default behavior is if I've got a bunch of inputs and their max length is all set to one, so it only holds one character, what's going to happen is I get the first character and then nothing for the rest of them. And I have to tab to go to each individual thing to move through the code, which, okay, fine. It's only one extra key press. But if you're trying to improve the user experience, if you're trying to build a website that's really user friendly, you want to make things as simple as possible. So being able to paste the entire code in there is going to be something that is desirable for the user. All right, so let's look at how we do this. In my HTML, I've got a simple form that has the six input elements. Each one of them has max length set to one. I've got autofocus set on the first input. So when the page loads, the focus is on that first element. They all have the same CSS class name. So this is how I'm going to target them in my script. In my script, I've got this being written out to the console just to give myself something that's got six characters that I can paste. So how do we want to handle this? Well, there is in JavaScript a copy event, a paste event, a cut event. So really what we want to do is handle the paste event. This part is actually really simple to do. So document add event listener paste. And when that happens, we're going to call our handle paste function. There we go. That's going to call this function right here. And we're going to check to make sure that the target so basically where the focus is right now is going to be our input element. If it's not the input element, we don't want to wreck the page. Like if there's some other element on the page where they could be pasting something, we don't want to interfere with that. But down here, here we go. This is where the focus is. This is where I'm going to do my paste. Okay. So as long as it is in one of my input elements, I'm going to allow this to continue. I'll prevent default. I'm not going to actually try and let the paste proceed because if I do, it's what happened right here originally. So if I've got this and I click here, the paste event is only going to end up putting that one character in here. I don't want that to happen. I want to control what happens. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to get the value from the paste event. And depending on which uh, browser we're dealing with, so there's the clipboard data in the event. If that doesn't exist, check the window object for clipboard data. So depending on which browser you're in, depending on um, where the data is coming from, we're going to call get data on whichever clipboard data object we want. Then this get data method says, okay, the stuff that's in there, what is the format of that? Well, in our case, it's just going to be text. So I want to get the text that's most recent inside that clipboard object. Okay, great. And I'm going to format that. I'm going to say paste to uppercase, just, uh, just to format it so it all looks the same. There we go. So I'm converting to uppercase. And we can write this out to the console to see what we're getting. And should not be a period. That should be an equal sign. There we go. So let's test this out. So we'll jump to our web page and I copy, come down here and I paste. And there it is. There is the value from the clipboard. So that works great. I have the value. So I'm going to get a reference now to all of my inputs. Okay. That's the array of all these input elements here, the ones with the same class. So I've got now an array that holds all six of them. Now we should check the length of what we're, we've taken from the clipboard as well. Now it's up to you how you want to handle it if it's not the right length, like if it's shorter than the input, if you want to take the first so many characters. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to reject it just to keep this simple. So we'll say 
if paste the string dot length does not equal inputs dot length. So if I don't have an exact match, I'm going to exit the function. So like I said, you can do whatever you want. If it's too short, too long, if you want to let it go in, if you don't want to let it go in, it's completely up to you. But I'm going to say, if it's not an exact match, then there's something wrong here. And you know, we could throw an error. We could say, instead of just returning, we could throw an error at this point to say, hey, you need to have something that's this, the correct number of characters. Now that we have the value, we've confirmed its length, we've got the value from the clipboard, we're going to loop through this. And I'm going to loop through the list of all the inputs with this class name. I will put a, put the focus on each one in turn, and input.value is going to be the individual character from the paste. So paste is a string, and you can access the individual characters within a string the same way you'd access something inside of an array. So the index is your number. The number gives you the position within the string, so I want character 0, character 1, character 2, and so on. Now, if I take this, put that into my clipboard, I've copied it, I come down here, I paste, there we go! I have now pasted in all of it, and you can see that the final one has the focus because we jumped. Focus, 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 paste, paste, paste as we move through here. So now the user can see, okay, hey, we made it all the way to the end. So that's the first part solved with just that little bit of code. And if you want to improve this so that the user can read the code someplace else, maybe they've got the code on their phone and this is on their laptop, so they want to type it in, we can do that as well. What we're going to do up here is for all these inputs, we're just going to loop through them and add an input listener for each one. So the for each method will loop through this collection of the input elements. Each time it runs this function, like this could be a function someplace else on our code. If you're not sure how the for each works, I've got a, a card there that'll take you to the video to explain how the for each works, either case here. But it's always going to pass to our function three things. The item in your array or in your collection, the index, is it number zero, number one, number two, number three, and then a reference back to this element right here, so this input thing. And I'm going to say that my index number, so this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. As we paste inside of here, I'm sorry, not paste, but as we type, oh, sorry, I skipped. We have to add the input listener, as I was saying before. So we add the event listener. We're looping through this for each one of the input events. So this, the input event as is when the user types a character inside of an input element. So every single character they type is going to trigger this. If they want to type four things, four letters inside of an input, this event would be triggered four times. So we're inside the for loop. We're looping through here. The event is going to give us the element that we're dealing with. So ev.target will be this, will be this. It's the same thing. It's the event that we're actually looking for. Sorry, that's a regular function, not an arrow function. And we're going to get a reference back to this array here. So that's the whole array of all the inputs. And I want to move from the one that I'm on right now to the next one. This is what we want to do as we type. So every time they type a character, we want to jump to the next input element. So index plus one. So if I'm on input number zero, I want to go to number one. If I'm on number one, I want to go to two. If I'm on three, go to three. If I'm on 27, I want to go to 28. Now, I need to test and see, okay, am I on the last one here? So we could do that, but uh, just by looking at the length and the index number that we're on, but we can do it very simply in JavaScript with this operator. 
This is called the optional chaining operator. And basically what it does is says, does this thing exist? If it does, then continue on with the code and do whatever you want with it. And I want to focus on it. So if there is one after the one that I'm looking at, then go ahead and put the focus on it. And that's it. That's all the code that we need, just these few lines right here. So we get the array of all the inputs. We loop through all the inputs. We add the input event to each of the inputs. And as the input event happens, meaning the user has typed one character, we jump to the next one. So I'm on the page. My autofocus has given me this. And as I type A, B, C, D, 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 there we go. So we're just typing going through. Now to format it, we had uppercase here before. We can do that as well. We can take the input that we're currently looking at. So I can type array input, or I could just put input. It's this variable right here, which is the one that we're currently looking at. So I can say value equals input dot value dot to uppercase. So doing the same thing that we did down here. We're converting every single letter as you type to uppercase. So now A, B, C, D, E, F. There we go. And that's it. That's how you automatically jump to the next one as the person's filling it in, or you allow somebody to copy, come down here into the first and paste. And there we go. There's our code being pasted in. All right. So I hope that helps you out, gives you some ideas for things that you can do. And as always, thanks for watching.